All right, hello and welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to Oceana's Ocean Steward Spotlight. This is your first time joining us for this series. It's really an opportunity to highlight incredible ocean stewards from around the country doing fantastic work to protect our oceans and their communities. Um, they often come from diverse backgrounds and tackle an array of issues. And we ultimately wanna shine a light on folks doing this good work and connect ocean lovers um, and advocates with stories that may be important and inspiring to them. And today's guest story was certainly inspiring and important to me. Um, and I cannot wait to talk uh, with our guests. But before we begin, I wanna introduce myself. My name is Hunter Miller, and I am the Florida Gulf Coast Field Representative for Oceana. As a field rep, um, I get to work across Oceana's US campaigns, building support for local state and national policy change by working di directly with coastal community stakeholders, fishers, businesses, um, and res residents. But uh, enough about me. I'm really thrilled to introduce today's guest, Andrew Atazo. Uh, Andrew has become sort of an environmental and marine debris celebrity here in Florida. He's appeared on many TV, radio, and print media spotlights and has uh, pulled an impressive haul of marine debris out of um, our environment. Over the past four years, he's led efforts to remove over 14,530 pounds of trash from South Florida's mangroves in our ocean. Um, he currently works in public relations and frequently gives guest lectures on grassroots activism. Um, he was previously employed as the Cuba Study Group's executive director, and prior to that, he's implemented U.S. foreign policy uh, with Venezuela, Peru, Ecuador, Bolivia, Colombia at the State Department and, and worked as Mexican President Felipe Calderon's assistant. And he's also an author and the creator of some of the best Miami memes that you can find. We are so thrilled to have Andrew with us. Andrew, thanks for being with us. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me and giving me that meme shout out. Yeah, I love your memes. Be sure to follow Andrew on Twitter. It's wonderful. Um, so obviously, from that lengthy uh, intro, there is a lot going on in the life of Andrew Atazo. Your plate is full of great stuff. Um, and I'm curious, um, what led you to be this incredible advocate for our oceans and sustainable solutions to managing our waste? And in other words, um, what leads a person to remove over 14,000 pounds of marine debris from Biscayne Bay? Right. Actually, as of last week, I'm now at 15,000 pounds. <laughs> Congrats. Um, thank you. Uh, my back hasn't given out yet. Hopefully it'll hold up for a bit more. But what led me to this was a realization about four years ago. Well, first of all, let me, let me step back for a second and say that I've been exploring our coastal ecosystems for like 20 years now. So specifically, I fell in love with the mangroves at a very early age. For those who don't know, it's a coastal forest that regularly floods with the tides. Um, and it is an incredible keystone ecosystem. It is absolutely key for all sorts of marine and land and, uh, and birds, uh, all sorts of animals. Um, but I would go out into these mangroves and, you know, just enjoy the beauty and the serenity of it. But it would, to be perfectly honest, be completely marred by thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds of trash everywhere. It looked like a landfill. You couldn't step in any single location without step, stepping on a piece of trash. And I don't, I, before I started this work, I didn't have a background in advocacy or environmentalism. So, you know, I would try to reach out to my local policymakers um, or, and also to local journalists and say like, hey, there's a problem here. You know, someone should do something about this, but nothing came of it. So eventually I'm, I'm a very stubborn person. So I just thought to myself, well, no one's going to do anything. I'll start doing something about this. Um, so just very methodically day after day after day, I just started going out there and picking up trash. And it's been 105 days that I've gone out there. Um, and it's, and beyond that, it's just something I really, really enjoy. Like you, you wouldn't think that, you know, picking up trash in, you know, Miami summer in the middle of an, uh, a mangrove swamp is that enjoyable. But for me, it is a wonderful experience because I get to be out there in a place that I absolutely love. Yeah. And, um, 
you know, when I discovered your work, um, it was basically right at the beginning of the pandemic. We were all home on our computers more, craving social interaction with people that we uh, see or have things in common with. And I stumbled up, up upon videos that you had created of what you were doing down in South Florida, you know, pulling out all this trash and uh, raising awareness. I'm curious kind of when you thought it was the right thing to do to start documenting with videos and pictures and using social media to raise awareness because that seems like it just kind of exploded and people are really starting to, to see like the extent of like what you're saying, the, the mangrove forest being completely overridden with, with debris. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I bought my first GoPro like, like two weeks before I started picking up just because I wanted to document my experiences in nature. I'm, you know, I'm an avid outdoorsman. I'm, I, I do, you know, long distance ocean kayaking and swimming and running and hiking, mountain biking, road biking. So I just wanted to document my experience. And I began, um, you know, my work in the mangroves in a similar vein. I just wanted for my own sake to begin to document all the work that I was doing. And I was very, very surprised that anyone cared at all. Uh, like I would just post it on my own personal Facebook page and, you know, I got a, a very good response and people started to share it. Um, and then, you know, as word spread, journalists would reach out to me and I would started speaking to schools and to universities and to literally anyone who would have me. But I was very surprised. I kind of stumbled into this very grassroots, uh, social media driven, digitally driven activism. Um, I just wanted to go out there and pick up trash. Um, but then, you know, people would reach out to me to asked me to lead cleanup, so I started doing that, and, and it really became much more of a local movement, um, but it was not on purpose, at least not initially. Yeah, I, I, what's been really cool is watching, you know, the videos are really awesome, so if you haven't seen these videos, you should really look it up, um, but it's like kind of like, to me, it reminds me like a Survivor Man video where you're out in the wilderness, and it's just these amazing photos of you or you or friends pulling all sorts of objects um, out of the uh, out of the, the mangrove forests and um, and the end products with the giant bags and you know you hauling stuff back and forth and there's got to be just some bizarre things that you pulled out I was curious you know what maybe some of the more bizarre things that you wouldn't expect to be you know uh, in the bay on the mangrove I uh, islands and things like that everything. <laughs> everything that humanity creates winds up in the ocean and then I find it in the mangroves. Um, just two weeks ago, uh, I pulled out a six foot tall hospital oxygen canister out of the mangroves. Um, but name it, I mean like car batteries, uh, a tremendous amount of clothes, needles. Um, I've yet to find a square grouper. Um, so <laughs> once I do, I'll, I'll report it to the local officials. But uh, yeah, I think probably some of the most interesting things that I find out there are, you know, the, some of the, the items have been out there for decades, and they, they go back even to the 40s. Um, so, for example, during World War II, a bunch of German U-boats blew up uh, some oil tankers offshore Miami Beach. And some of that oil is still floating around, and it comes ashore, and you'll find, like, big blocks of essentially, like, solidified oil out there. Um, I also found a 20 millimeter artillery shell that was maybe it was fired by one of the local destroyers at the U-boats. <clears throat> Excuse me. Obviously, it was a dud. It was like completely oxidized. So, you know, I threw that away. But uh, yeah, that was definitely very shocking to find. Yeah, um, it, it's been really interesting to watch. And I know um, in addition to these large items um, or sometimes bizarre items, uh, there's obviously a lot of plastic pollution, and that's something that Oceana works on, you know, passing policies um, to reduce the amount of plastic that's entering our oceans. Um, and, you know, 15,000 pounds, wow, that's, that's just an incredible feat. However, if you've ever been to a beach cleanup or, or any type of, type of cleanup, the weight is important to know, but it's also not just these big, large items. It's also these tiny pieces of plastic um, that are incredibly difficult to pick up. 
um, and kind of illustrate the magnitude of the problem. It's not just giant, easy to grab items, um, but it's also plastic in all its forms from big stuff to, to tiny stuff and, and how difficult it is to remove the microplastics that we find when we're, when we're attempting to clean things up. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Everything breaks down. Um, I, I have a very obsessive personality out there. So like I'll get down on my hands and knees and, and start picking the individual pieces of plastic, but microplastics, again, they can be anything from an inch, two inches to like microscopic. Um, right. and they're everywhere. And when I see the trash out there, the larger pieces of trash, I, in my mind, I have like a, a fast forwarded timeline. So I think to myself, okay, this, whatever bucket I found out here in, I don't know, maybe 50 years is going to break down into millions of pieces of microplastic. So I always have that in my mind. Yeah, certainly. I know um, two weeks ago, I, I was at a beach cleanup and I too was on my hands and it was just tiny um, pieces of confetti that were breaking down. And it was just like, yeah. I was so determined to get it all. And it was, it was, you know, only in an area that was, you know, three feet in diameter, but it, it must have taken me 20 minutes to get it all. Um, yeah. It took forever. Um, and, um, you know, I know a big part of, of the way that you, um, you know, raise awareness about these issues. Um, it, it's for you, I, I, I've seen in the past, it's not a, just about picking things up. I've, I've also really enjoyed hearing you talk about advocating for, for policy change and, and, and kind of how we deal with our waste and and ways that we can move forward and kind of stop this endless cycle because I know you, you really enjoy it, but I'm sure ultimately you'd love to see, you'd love to come back and there'd be, you know, yeah. no plastic waste or no waste on these islands. Yeah. Yeah. I want to go into the mangroves. I would far more enjoy the mangroves if there weren't trash there. I'd like to visit it without having to pick up trash. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'd also like to ask you about, um, the experience of bringing people out. Uh, there's like something that happens to us, you know, we can share all the videos that we want or, or imagery and as, as organizations, but when you physically bring someone out to experience a problem firsthand, can you talk about what, you know, what you see time and time again, when you bring people out there and they experience it uh, firsthand and having to take, you know, get their hands dirty. Can you uh, describe that experience that, that you've seen time and time again? Right. It's a very visceral reaction. Um, so everyone, I've taken out, you know, I've taken out seven-year-old Girl Scouts and I've taken out, you know, like 70-year-old retirees out there. Um, and it's across the political spectrum. So left to right. And the first thing that they recognize is that this is an incredible ecosystem. Um, the beauty is, un is, is, if you've never been in there, it's unimaginable. It is absolutely unique and it is so diverse and there's so much life everywhere so people connect very much for, at a very tactile level with this habitat so that's the first reaction and then you see the wave of realization wash over them where they they'll turn to me and they'll ask like wait a second where does this trash come from and I explain to them it just comes from the ocean it comes with every new tide you know a lot of people will see my video and they'll assume oh random people will go out into these habitats and just dump their trash there but no most of this is coming in from a giant deposit that we have out in the bay and out into the in the atlantic um in every major body of water in, on the planet and it just gets swept in and then they realize the magnitude of the problem um so you know that is that's gratifying for me because that's more converts essentially that will push more policy solutions um but, <clears throat> excuse me, like I said, people connect with this. It's, it's, I was very surprised initially how, how they connected with it um, online um, and through social media. But when you take them out there, it's just a different level of understanding and realization. And a lot of people, it's, you get like obsessive about it, to be perfectly honest. Um, you want to keep going back out there. You want to keep, you know, trying to improve this, this issue. Um, but what I tell people is that we can do this for the rest of my life and I can pick up a hundred thousand pounds of trash over my lifetime, but that's a drop in the bucket if we don't push our policymakers to implement solutions that 
that really resolve this problem at a systemic level from a you know bird's eye 10,000 foot view. Um, and, and honestly, all that I do now, whether it's posting these videos online um, or leading groups out into the mangroves or, or talking to universities or to whomever, um, that's all a means to that ultimate end. I wanna draw people in, I wanna get them interested, I wanna educate them, but honestly, like this is not the end. <laughs> the end is we push our policymakers um, in the legislative and executive branches to actually do something so that we don't have to keep doing these coastal cleanups forever. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, you know, we all, we all have seen it, you know, where the, the buck gets passed down. Um, and, and so often um, the burden of this issue gets placed on individuals um, where, you know, we're asked to go clean, clean up debris or plastic pollution or bring our own bag and straw and, and that maybe magically can get us to where we need to be. Obviously, it's not going to get us there and we need every facet of society to chip in and not just in individuals. Um, so it's really amazing to see you kind of advocating for that and, and bringing people along with you. And I think it's been so inspiring. Um, so I know like for our audience, you know, there are folks that have been, you know, that are seasoned advocates that are watching. And there's also young folks and people kind of just getting involved in, in ocean conservation. Um, we're just kind of loving the ocean and wanting to see how they can help. Um, do you have any advice for someone that's kind of just getting into advocacy or uh, conservation, you know, that doesn't really know where to start? Do you have any kind of uh, advice for them, how they can start to make a difference or, or what they could do? Individually, you can make a difference right now. Um, you don't have to wait. The, when I, what I tell students um, is, is don't wait for, for permission. Um, <laughs> go out there and start, you know, start working today. Um, that doesn't mean, let me actually, let me walk that back for a second. That doesn't mean just walk into like a sensitive off limits habitat and start mucking around because that's a great way to make more damage than good. Um, you know, educate yourself um, and speak to individuals who, who already know the sector and, and have been um, working on environmental initiatives, especially, you know, if you're, you're more interested in, uh, say, ocean-related issues. But again, there's a very wide range of issues, obviously, for everything from, from invasive species to ocean sea level rise to everything in between. But first, educate yourself. Once you have a good grasp, you can make a local difference today. That's how I started. Um, you know, uh, change happens over time. Um, it's not going to be something sudden. You're not going to post one video and suddenly you solve marine trash for all time. Um, you know, you can, on an individual level, go out there and, you know, pick up a 20 by 20 square foot area. And then the next day, another, you know, the same uh, amount of area and then over time you know you accumulate square miles right that you've cleaned um, so that's individually um, you know remain persistent and and just you know start working um, once you've educated yourself um, my on a, on a more strategic level my advice is like I said get involved in policy um, and it doesn't need to be you know you don't have to be a, a modern day Machiavelli pulling strings or like a giant donor that can just dump a bunch of money into the campaign. It can be, be as simple as writing an email to your local congressperson or to your local commissioner, um, you know, at a, at a municipal or county or state level. That makes a difference. And people think that, you know, um, politicians will just listen to whoever is donating money. But the thing is, they need to listen to their constituents. Um, if they don't, they don't get reelected. So it's, it's not from some, some sense of civic duty by and large, um, but it's, be, it's pure self-interest. Um, you know, if they wanna get reelected, they need to listen to the people that are voting for them or not. Um, so, you know, get involved, um, write to your Congress people, write to your, to your local legislators, um, get involved in campaigns. And the thing is with electoral politics, um, politicians, you know, can promise you the moon but then after they get elected into office, people kind of lose interest and go about their daily lives. That's where the real important work starts. 
um, you know, you need to stay on top of them. You need to keep the pressure up on on policymakers and ensure that they keep their promises. And if they don't, you vote them out. It's that simple. Um, yeah, that's my that's my suggestion. And I, I feel like every every answer that I give you is is get involved in politics and policy. But that's how you solve this. Um, and find like minded individuals. Find yourself a community. That's why I love doing what I do because among you know sometimes I just want to be alone in the mangroves. Uh, but sometimes I want to be surrounded by other people who, you know, have the same mission, have the same goals as myself. And um, getting involved with organizations like your own, yeah, obviously, to make a very obvious plug, is an excellent, excellent way to do that. Yeah, I appreciate that. And, you know, going back to, um, you know, even getting involved in the local level, you know, obviously help support local campaigns to pass policies at the local level, whether it's straw ban or, or something like banning polystyrene foam on city property. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen what, how impactful, like a group of senior citizens can be, like four, four people um, that now have passed a policy um, that is going to sub like, like substantially reduce the amount of plastic pollution that's going into our oceans. I've also seen uh, instances where, um, you know, we're working with a group, a group that wants to get involved in policy change at the local level, and they email a commissioner or a mayor, and the mayor's like, man, I've been waiting for this email. Um, a lot of times, commissioners want to do the right thing, but they really, there's no, there's no reason for them to do it unless they have to be asked first. Right. Um, and we assume that maybe somebody else will do it, but really, it's like, we have to just take it upon ourselves and be the person that takes the first step and makes the ask. And it's, it's really incredible. Um, and, and winning a campaign like that, a small local campaign is empowering and, and just kind of shows you like what's possible and how really just a few people can affect change. So it's, it's, it's pretty amazing to see as an organizer. Absolutely. Yeah, yes. uh, it's, it's cliche, but a small number of people can make a difference. Yeah, certainly, certainly. Um, well, I was just curious, you know, you have so much going on and um, uh, I, was, I was wondering what, what might be next for you. What's your goal? Um, what do you ultimately want to see? Is this just, you know, something that, that you will continue to plan to do is take folks out onto the mangroves and, and, and show them more? Or what's next for, for you, Andrew? Uh, in terms of my environmental work, um, yeah, I'm going to keep going into the environments for as long as I'm physically able. Um, and as long as I'm out there, I'm going to clean up trash. I mean, like, I can't help myself. <laughs> um, uh, but at a more, at a, I guess, a broader level, what I want to do is I want to continue to build a community in South Florida and even a wider community of 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 individuals living along the coast or that are interested in in coastal and marine issues that will start to catalyze a grassroots movement to really prioritize um, solving the issue of marine trash and pollution um, because I know you know I've seen the studies and I see it firsthand every time I go out there this issue is just getting worse every day and I refuse to sit back and throw my hands up and say, well, there's nothing I can do about this. So, you know, eventually our mangroves and our coral reefs and all of our other, and, you know, our seagrass beds, all of our other coastal ecosystems are just going to be absolutely decimated. And this will be a, uh, you know, a legacy that our uh, descendants will never experience um, and will just be... <clears throat> will be poorer for it, you know, from an environmental standpoint, from a societal standpoint, but also it, it, it affects our pocketbooks. Um, if like 90% of the reef fish um, out in the ocean uh, start their, have their juvenile phase in the mangroves and they're not around anymore, well, guess what? People aren't going to be coming to South Florida to, to, to fish anymore or to support our ecotourism. Um, so it's going to affect us in a very visceral way and our health. <laughs> uh, you know, I want to be able to eat, continue to eat seafood um, without having to worry about the amount of plastic that I'm consuming if I have some tuna or something. 
Um, by the way, it should be sustainably sourced for everyone <laughs> out there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I just want to continue to build community and build pressure on policymakers. Um, that's that's my plan. I'm gonna, you know, I've I've done big splashy activations like in 2019, I walked the the Miami Marathon carrying 30 pounds of mangrove trash, um, and that was terrible. <laughs> I don't want to do that again. Um, but and you know, the next year I I got smarter and I got a team together to help me pull a 135 pound trash cart that looked like a dead fish um, throughout the marathon. So you know keep doing things like that, that bring these problems out from an environment that people don't ever go to. The mangroves are, the mangroves are a scary place if you don't know them. Um, they look very, they look scary um, and they look impassable, but I, that's why, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Um, so you can have a perfectly clean beach next to a strand of mangroves that are just full of trash. Um, but I want to bring the problem out from the shadows and present it to um, my community so that they understand how large this problem is and so that we can start to do something to alleviate it. Yeah, well, you certainly have a gift of doing that. And, you know, I'm just uh, really thankful for all the work that you do down in South Florida. It permeates throughout the whole state and is a, is a shining example of, you know, how one person can just make this huge impact and inspire so many um, and give us great ideas and insights of how to tackle this issue. Um, so, you know, as an ocean lover and someone that also, you know, works to fight to solve these problems, thank you for, for doing what you do and, um, and for being with us today um, for this series. It's been like such a pleasure to talk to you. I wish we could talk longer. Um, and I need to get down to South Florida sometime and get out on a kayak with you. I'd love to do for that. Sure. It's on my list, and um, let's make it happen. Um, Absolutely. For sure. Okay, well, um, we're going to put up some of, uh, some of Andrew's um, hashtags and, and handles um, so you can follow his work. Um, please, please do. You will not be disappointed. Um, and uh, we'll keep in touch and, and, uh, and, and continue to share your work, Andrew. We appreciate you and um, looking forward to, to working with you in the future. It was an absolute pleasure. And I, I absolutely look forward to collaborating in the future as well. All right. Well, have a, have a wonderful day. You too.